Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Um, today we're actually going to actually move on with a bit of scenery on the Station Road layout and it's the particular area around by the curved viaduct. Uh, I really want to sort of get that area finished uh, because then I can actually permanently fix the viaduct in place, secure the track down and actually begin doing a bit of ballasting. Um, but at this stage, uh, I've left the viaduct um, just placed there so that I can gain access to the scenery underneath. So that is the plan for this uh, particular episode. Now, I, I'm pretty sure I'll probably break this into part one and part two because uh, there's quite a bit actually involved in this whole, uh, well, segment, I guess. So with this part one, we'll tackle the uh, road surface. Uh, we might do a little bit of uh, static grass application. Uh, there is a stonewall fencing that I'd like to get into place, um, which is based on the uh, previous demonstration that I did a, uh, a couple of videos ago. And also actually finishing the post and wire fencing. Uh, which I actually began quite some time ago and never got around to finishing it. So, and then finally there will be um, foliage, uh, trees, scrub, um, wild grass, all sorts of things like that to uh, finish off with. So uh, I think rather than sort of mucking around, uh, let's get on with it. So this is the area that I'm actually going to work on and I only got so far with it as I mentioned. So we're going to get into this, get this finished so that I can permanently fix this uh, viaduct down and uh, we can possibly even begin a bit of ballasting. Um, so I'm going to do it in some various stages. We'll start with the road, I think. Uh, we'll get that tar seal on, then we've got shrubbery and static grass and we're going to introduce the stone wall fencing that I worked on in the previous video. So we'll be back in a second. I will be taking up this track and lifting up this viaduct so we can gain access to the scenery underneath. Right so with the viaduct lifted out uh, we now have easy access into these areas here and uh, here's the viaduct itself which I showed this in a previous video and I'll just pop a link up at the top there. So uh, without further ado let's get into this and let's see if we can get this particular area finished.
So as you've just seen in the last clip, we've got the road surface down, which is the method that I have used in other areas and also a, there's some links to previous videos on how I do that. And I've also applied a little bit of static grass, um, some longer static grass, I think possibly three or four mil, just around the uh, pylons of the viaduct, just to sort of create a bit of variation in the grass texture and tone as well. Now, you would have seen in the video there, um, I have used my uh, homemade um, static grass app applicator, and um, it is basically your uh, electric fly swat and a um, metal sieve. Um, now there's no point in me doing a video on how I made this because there are countless videos out there on how to make these um, which is hence how I learned how to do make one as well. Um, now I've actually um, uh, it's got quite a fine mesh uh, in this sieve so in some respects it's really only good for quite short uh, static grass I'm actually going to make another applicator with a, uh, a much larger grid on the mesh which I think will work better for longer static grass. So there we go. So uh, what we're going to carry on with now is uh, getting some stone wall made up, um, quite, a, quite a good batch of stone wall and uh, once again link up in the top corner uh, from the previous video or a couple of two videos ago of um, how I went about making the stone wall. So um, this is the um, stone wall that is going to go actually around this area, around the, the viaduct scene and so forth. And I'm going to just make a few changes based from based on what I learned from the um, test or demonstration video that I did. So here I've got the uh, air dry clay in the uh, airtight container and fortunately it hasn't dried out so it's still actually really soft and um, malleable. Um, I am going to make the um, cut the strips a bit smaller uh, because the um, the stone wall that was in the uh, the demonstration video that I did uh, I kind of felt like that the wall was just a little bit on the big side like uh, in real life it might have been really sort of almost up to kind of head height really which um, although potentially there are stone walls out there of that size but um, I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. Now and the other thing that I'm going to do and you know I had lots of comments and feedback on the stone wall video and which was absolutely awesome and it's brilliant and a lot of people sort of cast their ideas and thoughts on it and yeah one of the one of them was you know why not pre-paint the um, clay in a dark tone colour before you stick the stone chips on and I sort of thought you're kind of going to sort of interrupt maybe the the drying time for for the actual clay itself by doing that. Now um, the interesting thing is of course I paint um, the clay with the PVA glue uh, in order for the chips to actually stick because the chips won't really stick by themselves unless you uh, paint the PVA over the top but I've had a thought and I'm going to give it a go, what about if I tint the PVA glue? So um, I'm just going to add a little bit of um, acrylic um, grey, a really dark grey, to the PVA, which in theory will should tint it down but also still uh, have the give the PVA a good um, adhesion for the stone chips and thus potentially possibly avoiding having to go um, over the walls afterwards and uh, brush around in the gaps and so forth. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Now the only reason I'm doing that um, and people say well why don't you just buy grey putty or grey clay. Now um, here in New Zealand, um, well at least air dry clay, you can either either get white or terracotta. Um, the, there is no uh, grey air dry clay. Um, if there was, I'd buy it. But um, but for some reason you just can't get it. And terracotta, I don't really want to do that because in the end you're still going to have to paint it because otherwise you're going to have all the orange bits showing through um, instead of the white. So that's why I've gone for the white. But anyway, we'll get into this and I'll speed this up because you've seen it all before in the previous video. And we'll see how this goes with um, tinting the PVA glue.
Okay, so we've now got um, eight sections of stone wall. So there we go. So what I'm going to do with these now is, um, and we'll just sort of show you the uh, finished walls. Um, as you can see, I still haven't done the top. So the idea is that um, I'm just going to let the uh, PVA paint mixture just dry a little bit, and I think that it'll it will go off and and dry a little bit quicker than the actual uh, clay material. So the idea is just to let that. Um, dry off just a little bit and then once we've got it um, you know to that stage but still at the point where the, uh, the stone walls are still quite flexible is we'll uh, put them into place and glue them down uh, and then after we've done that then I can just go over the top edges with more of the grey PVA and sprinkle some stones across the top to finish it off so uh, yeah um, I guess the next bit will be uh, putting these in place. So I'm just going to use the, um, the PVA Gorilla Glue to stick these walls down. I mean you could probably use um, hot glue gun um, but um, I'm gonna just give the PVA glue a go because the hot glue gun is sort of a bit messy and you have to be reasonably quick um, before the glue actually re-hardens. So we're gonna give this a go. So um, that's as far as I've man managed to get with uh, the stone wall that I've made up so far and, uh, and I've done the top edges. Uh, it gets a little bit fiddly and a little bit messy when you're doing the top edges and essentially uh, what I'm going to do um, once I've done some of the other scenics as well including some of the foliage and shrubbery and things like that that's going to be uh, dotted around um, I will be uh, then soaking that with um, a you know glue solution, and I think I'll probably also go over the actual the stone walls as well, um, because that's going to just um, you know coat it and solidify the walls even further. But um, you know, as you can see, it's um, it's come out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with with how they look so far. Um, of course, uh, as you can see, there's more to do, but. Uh, yeah, and if we just zoom in a little bit. And uh, there we go. Right, so another part of this, um, the viaduct scene is also, of course, the water reservoir, which I had previously built up at the top of the hill and there is a link up top there to uh, that particular video. So it was always a plan to have some form of uh, water pipe that ran down the side of the hill that sort of implied that um, the reservoir was used to supply water to that particular part of the town or something similar. So what I've built and I'll show you some wee still photos as well um, of how I put these together. Little sort of uh, stone junctions, which are going to, there's two of them, which I'm going to have placed down the hillside, and they'll be connected by some water pipe. 
So this basically well, gives the suggestion that the water is fed down through the uh, sinkhole in the bottom, in the middle of the reservoir, uh, then is fed down through these pipes and then across the road. So the piping that I'm actually going to use, and, um, and it's basically just came down to what's available, is um, irrigation uh, uh, pipes uh, or risers um, that I can buy from the local uh, hardware store and they I think will actually work out quite well in terms of the, uh, the actual diameter they're pretty much going to you know so we're going to have something like that and um, these work out at about I don't know how long that is um, they work out at about 90 cents a, a tube so and then of course I'll paint them up and make them look all rusty and so forth. So um, that's the idea behind that. Now, um, also for the top of these, so as you can imagine, these you know brick and then maybe a concrete top to it because there's also finishing off the top of the reservoir sort of intake as well. And uh, I saw a video that another chap actually put together. I can't remember for, for, for the life of me um, the channel, unfortunately, um, but it was about sort of making roadway and also sort of maybe kind of concrete effect um, that um, is relatively simple to do and, and cost effective. And that is using a super fine grit sandpaper. And so I've got uh, P1200 sandpaper, and um, the idea is to actually scrunch it up a wee bit and, you know, rough it up. And I'll glue some pieces into here, and well, the idea hopefully is that sort of might imply that sort of you know bit of sort of um, old, worn out concrete. So we'll give that a go now. So here we have the um, sort of roughened up concrete or bitumen uh, type material that's on the top of this. And that actually works quite well, you know, it's sort of got the weathered rustic look to it. So um, here we have it. Now we can see the reservoir up here and, and my sort of reasoning behind uh, this pipeline is that uh, of course the water goes down through in here into uh, well basically a drain type system in underneath here uh, goes down straight down through into the into the hill um, but then roughly it, there's going to be a pipe which is buried and and it's underneath here and then it, it's sort of because of the undulation of the land uh, coming down through this area here it's going to pop out uh, from underground and this is where one of our first sort of junctions will actually be sitting in here and uh, and this is where we'll see the pipeline actually for the first time and it might be sort of maybe about there somewhere and then there'll be another one further down uh, which will then cross over the top of the road so um, yeah so what I'm going to do now all of this here is the solid polystyrene underneath here uh, so it should be relatively, well I'm hoping, relatively easy for me to cut some chunks out of this uh, hillside to insert these junctions that I have made up. Right, so I've just momentarily put a little bit of the plastic 
piping in that's still got to be uh, glued into place and I'm going to put in some kind of little mounting brackets around the brickwork and so forth. Um, maybe even put some seams in it, some joins in it maybe to sort of make it look um, a little bit more authentic looking. Um, and it'll just go into the uh, embankment on that side which I've yet to sort of figure out what else I'm going to do there. But um, yeah, it, it sort of gives, gives you the idea of uh, where the water is actually going. So um, we're getting there. It's, um, it's coming together. Uh, so we'll now crack on with the next piece, uh, which will be to thread the fishing line through the fence posts. And um, I put these fence posts in probably maybe a year ago. <laughs> And that's as far as I got. So um, they are the pre-drilled fence posts as per a previous video I did on, on how I did those. And there's a link up in the top corner. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that and uh, then paint them up. And uh, that will be the next component completed. So we now have all the fencing completed. So uh, the post and wire fencing has been threaded and uh, now also painted so uh, as you can see that and also I've just put some wee small sort of mounting plates uh, around the pipe work um, so that it sort of anchors it more to the actual brick uh, junction plinths or boxes so uh, here we go so um, as per the previous video I'd mentioned, this is um, the kind of traditional post and wire farm fence uh, now complete. So there's a little bit there. We come down. There's more of it here. And of course it goes up the side up there. And over there, we've also got more of the fencing. So, slowly but surely, it's beginning to take shape. So, we'll leave it there for part one and uh, I think it's sort of coming together reasonably well. Uh, part two, we'll look at the foliage, so uh, scrub, trees, um, bushes, um, foliage, all of that kind of stuff, we'll look in at part two. Uh, this will also actually include um, a little bit more static grass application because I wasn't overly happy with the little bit of static grass that I did apply and I think that really comes down to the applicator that I was using and as I mentioned um, it has quite a fine grid mesh and so it, I think it really is only suitable for very short uh, static grass where I have used it in the past and it has actually worked very successfully. Uh, so that was, of course, this wee homemade contraption here. Uh, and I think this will be my very fine, short, static grass applicator. And as I mentioned actually in the video, uh, because I've actually spread this out over a, a couple of days, uh, there was talk about making a new static grass applicator for longer uh, grass material so possibly you know three to four millimeter static grass uh, so I've gone ahead and actually uh, made a new applicator but in a different style because I always wanted to give it a go and once again I'm not actually going to do a video on how I made it because there are loads of videos out there on making this type of applicator uh, and then there is also some videos out there for this kind of applicator. So um, it has yet to be trialed, <laughs> so this will actually come up in the part two video. And uh, by accounts, I think it should work quite well. 
Um, and uh, just to add a little bit of curiosity to this contraption, once again it is electric fly swat, um, but a different brand, a different version. Once again, incredible, super cheap, like five dollars for, for for the fly swat. Uh, then we have uh, just your average uh, plastic container with a sealable lid. Not a screw lid, but a sealable lid, because if you had a screw lid, the wire would get twisted uh, inside there. So uh, one of them, this is just a smaller version, because I was just trying out which version might be best. A uh, medicine bottle, plastic medicine bottle, which is part of the the mounting system so um, yeah it's uh, it all should work so um, hopefully I'll this coming weekend I should be able to get part two out um, which means there's not so much of a gap between videos but um, yeah so uh, stay tuned for that uh, part two video and I certainly hope you enjoyed part one and got some uh, well inspiration and uh, ideas uh, from that video and uh, yeah, take care everyone, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you soon, bye for now.